Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Welcome here today. Welcome back if you've been with us for any amount of time. And if you're new, what I want you to know, this is a show dedicated to giving you conversations, resources, equipment, tools, whatever you might need to help you become a better man. And today we're talking about something that uh, a lot of men have some real misunderstandings about, and that is our emotions. We're, we're led to believe that we're not supposed to be emotional, that uh, if we're guided by or instructed by our emotions at all, that we're being less manly. There's even misconceptions about the concept of stoicism. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody on Instagram the other day about this concept of stoicism, that it's, uh, it's, it's the suppression of emotion. And that, that's not what stoicism is. If you read the stoics, these are individuals who were keenly aware of their emotions and they understood how to keep them in check so they were not ruled by them, not governed by them, but certainly capable of using their emotional uh, responses for a factor in their decision-making process. Not the only factor by any means, but a factor. Because we all know guys who take it to different ends of the ex extreme. On, on one hand, you have the guy who who stymies emotions, who shows no emotion whatsoever, who locks everything in, locks everything up. And that person is one strange circumstance away from an emotional outburst and inappropriate and oftentimes violent behavior. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who are overly emotional. Uh, they, they, they crumble emotionally at the slightest sign of adversity. They tend to love drama and they make everything a bigger deal than it needs to be. And they're just all over the place as it relates to their own sanity and well-being and their ability to lead. So as a man, it's our job to be able to find where that happy medium is. The happy medium of understanding that all of our emotions are there to serve us in some way. We wouldn't have the, 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 the benefit of emotions if they weren't there to serve us, even the so-called negative emotions. And balance that with the fact that we don't need to be governed and ruled by our emotions. We don't need to be overly emotional if you will, or make all of our decisions based on how we feel in any given moment, because we can, we know that that changes quite frequently. So we're going to address that today. Um, I, I, I just think it's so important that we understand a different context as men for looking at emotions and, and one context that, that I've considered and that has helped me is that if we begin to look at our emotions, like the dashboard to our vehicle, the dashboard to your vehicle will tell you if the engine's getting hot. It'll tell you if you're speeding. It'll tell you if you're running out of gas. Uh, the other day, I was driving down the road, and I had a little indicator come on that said the engine is overheating. So I pulled over at the nearest gas station, and I looked at the engine coolant levels, and it was critically low. So I, I went into Napa. I got some engine coolant, filled it back up, back on the road. Everything's fine. I'm not mad at the emotion. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy and because the check engine light comes on, drive my truck off the side of the road and ram it into the next telephone pole that I see, which is what so many people do when it comes to their emotions. They do dumb things. They, they, they have outbursts. They punch walls. I'm not guilty of that as a younger man, but this is not how men handle or conduct themselves. But what we do is we look and say, hey, something's wrong. Something's going on here. What is it? So we evaluate it. And this is a very stoic approach. We evaluate what we're experiencing and what we're feeling. We use it as a metric or a consideration in our decision-making process. Not the only. We don't give it more weight than it deserves. And then we make better decisions and we get back on the road of life. And we improve our circumstances because we used emotion, not hit it. And if you're hiding it, guys... It's not that you're going to be indifferent to your emotions. I had somebody tell me that, you know, they're indifferent to their emotions. Well, no human is indifferent to what they feel. Absolutely not possible. You're always going to have feelings and thoughts. And if you're pretending to be indifferent, you're actually an emotional danger. 
You're a danger to other people around you. You're a danger to yourself because I promise you, trust me, those emotions will manifest themselves. You need to do it in a controlled way. You can't do it in a controlled way. It's going to be uncontrolled and it's going to be dangerous to yourself and people around you. So let's not pretend that men should be indifferent to what we're feeling. That's ridiculous. It's nonsense. It's not possible. The guys who are quote unquote indifferent to their emotions are probably the most emotional people out there because they place too much weight and emphasis on stymieing and stifling their emotions rather than understanding them. So let's talk about it. Number one, don't, don't stifle your emotions, right? If you're feeling sad or glad or mad or happy or angry or jealous or any of these other range of emotions that we experience and feel on a daily basis, you don't need to pen that stuff up. Why are we doing that? Now you don't need to be running around like an idiot. You don't need to be sobbing uncontrollably when you have a job to do. There's a there's an appropriate time and a place, but let's not pretend that we're above feeling glad or we're above being angry. It's okay. It's perfectly acceptable. But once you wrap your mind around the idea that we just can't lock them up and secure them up and hope that they'll stay there, we're on the path to not only emotional intelligence, but emotional freedom, emotional sovereignty. Isn't that what we're after? Isn't that the mark of a mature man, somebody who has control over his emotions? Not that he doesn't experience them, but that he can control his behavior based on how he's feeling. I'll get to that in a minute. But number one, get over the thing that you have to hide your emotions. That you can't be sad, that you can't be glad, that you can't be happy, that you can't be mad, you can't be angry. You can and in fact, you should. Things that we would never generally uh, connotate with, with negativity with regards to emotion are anger, jealousy, shame, guilt, remorse, sorrow, sadness. Well, you shouldn't feel that way. That's a negative emotion. No, actually, there's times in your life where you should feel guilty or you should feel shame or you should feel sorrow or you should feel sadness or you should be angry. You have a lot of Christians that talk about always being happy and turning the other cheek and no hate and no anger. Really? There was things that even Jesus hated. Things that he was angry about. Things that he was upset with. Things that he wouldn't tolerate. So it's not just about being good. It's not just about experiencing some sort of euphoric bliss. It's about taking the so-called negative emotions and trying to understand what they're trying to tell you. And they are trying to tell you something. We'll get to that in a minute. Number two, this is important. You can begin to understand your emotions through externalizing them. So what a lot of men will do is we'll internalize our emotions. I'm mad. And then we get mad because we're mad or I'm guilty and I shouldn't. So I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed that I feel guilty. So you're feeling another emotion because you're trying to hide the first emotion. And what I would suggest to you is that we can begin to understand what our emotions are telling us by externalizing them, not turning them inwards and locking them up, but externalizing them. How do we do that? One great way is to journal. If you're feeling mad about something or upset about something or sorry about something or you're down or whatever it might be, it might be a really good idea to get that out of your brain, out of your mind, out of your soul, and actually get that onto paper and start writing that down. Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? What triggered this response in you? How do you want to respond? How should you respond? How will you respond? What should you be learning? Is this appropriate? This emotional feeling that you're having right now, is it, is it appropriate based on what you're going through? These are all great prompts to write down in, in, in a journal and document what you're feeling and what you're experiencing at any given moment so you don't give it more weight by just wallowing up inside of you. Another great way is through talking with people. That could be a therapist, somebody who's trained and, and professionally licensed and has the ability to help you process and work through what you're experiencing. Or it could be a friend, a spouse. Now, there's a way to do this. We're going to talk about that. But telling people you're angry, if it's the right person, somebody who's credible, somebody who cares about you, somebody who's going to help you work through that, that's not a bad thing. 
lot of men don't do it because we do the lone wolf mentality. I'm supposed to be stoic is what they say. Misunderstanding of stoicism again. But I'm supposed to be stoic and I'm not supposed to be sad. Well, you know what? Welcome to the club. Sometimes you are just like I am, just like every other man out there. And if you can tell a guy who's in your corner, who's credible, who has your back and say, hey, you know, just feeling really down today. I'm feeling down because, uh, you know, things aren't going well with my relationship. Hey, that's a man who can call you into proper action. Oh, really? It's not going well in your relationship? Tell me about that. You tell him about it. And he gives you some pointers. Or, hey, I'm feeling really ashamed about myself because I've let my, my health get out of check and, you know, I'm more, I'm, I'm heavier than I want to be and I feel sluggish and lazy. And, a, and another man in your corner who cares about you and is credible and is in a, in a, a brother to you is going to say, hey, man, look, I get it. Why don't we go work out in the morning together? Or why don't I introduce you to my trainer? Or why don't I give you a couple of things you can do? Or why don't I call you this afternoon and check in on you and see how your food's doing for the day? But you can't get to that point if you're not willing to discuss what's going on in your mind, what you're dealing with, what you're working through, what you're trying to overcome, what barriers have presented themselves for you, what emotional, mental barriers have presented themselves for you. Guys, we can open up. We can talk about this stuff. Now, again, why you do it is important. We're not going to wallow in our own soil of pity. We're not doing it so we can get some sort of victim points from, from, from people. We're doing it so that we can come up with solutions. And then what we can do is we can, and this is point number three, begin to express ourselves in healthy ways. So you can actually have a conversation. Imagine this, actually having a conversation with your wife about how you're feeling about the marriage or how you're feeling about what's going on at work. Again, you're not dumping all of her, your baggage onto her. You're telling her, you're expressing it, and then you're going to tell her what the plan is to change the behavior, which will lead to feeling differently about yourself in the circumstance. But we can express ourselves in healthy ways. We can have outlets that are positive and productive for me, journaling. That's an expression of my emotions. Another one is working out. You know, when I'm in my head and, and things don't seem to be going as well as they could, and I'm emotional and I'm struggling, I can go to the gym and I can begin to work some of that out, work through that. And you know what? Sometimes at the end of a particularly heavy training session, I actually feel more emotional. And I'll tell you why that is. This is my guess anyways. This is my theory is that when you physically exhaust yourself, you no longer have the mental stamina to hide and suppress your emotions. And so for me, I become almost more emotional after a workout because I don't have the ability to suppress that like I've been doing in the past because I exerted all of my energy towards my training session. And then when you're feeling that, allow yourself to feel it. If you have to get in your car and and scream or cry, you know, heaven forbid that a man cry. But if you have to actually do that, do that when it's appropriate in your car by yourself, I would say is an appropriate time to do that and release it from your body. Get rid of it, flush it, process it. You know, it's like our body takes in food, right? It takes in food, it processes and breaks down the food in a specific order. It takes what it needs. It sends it to different parts of our body. And then we build muscles and it helps with recovery. Those are the nutrients. And then it expels through going to the bathroom, the things that it doesn't need. Our emotions are the same way. You're feeling something, you're experiencing something. Take what you can from that, experience it, learn from it, grow and then purge it from the rest from your system. Cry it out if you need to. Again, appropriately. You don't need to be crying and babbling on your wife's shoulder all the time. That's probably not an appropriate way. It might undermine the, uh, the trust and credibility that you have with her. That's not what I'm saying. But if you can get rid of that in a healthy way, then you free up and have more capacity to do different things, to be healthier. So again, number three, express those in healthy ways. Number four, Allow your emotions to serve you. Make the decision that your emotions aren't there to hinder you. They're not there to hurt you. They're not there to sabotage you. Now, you might let them. If you're angry about something and you decide to get road rage because somebody cuts you off on the road, that's an emotional response. And now it's actually hurting you. Being overly emotional is hurting you because you decide to have road rage and you get somebody 
or, or yourself hurt or killed when instead you can allow it to guide you. Why are you upset? I'll tell you, I get upset on the road usually when I'm impatient. You know, somebody cuts me off or they're driving in front of me too slow and I'm really impatient because I have somewhere to be and how can they be so inconsiderate? And really the problem is not the other person. The problem is my mismanagement of time. That's usually when I get road rage. I've mismanaged my time. I'm running late for an appointment. I've got a thousand other things to do, but I got to go do this errand real quick. And so I got to be hustling so I can get back and do this other thing that I need to do. That's a mismanagement of time. That's not another person's problem. That's my problem. So what we do is we allow our emotions to guide us in making good decisions. So if I'm angry about the car that's driving two miles under the speed limit in front of me, I can't control the other car. It's not even about the other car. But now I can say, okay, I'm angry. Why am I angry? Because I don't have as much time as I need. Oh, maybe I shouldn't stack my schedule like that. Maybe I should manage my time a little bit more effectively. And if I do that tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, I'll notice that I no longer have road rage. Because I allowed the anger to guide me. I didn't stifle, stifle it. I didn't hunker it down. It didn't not be emotional. I just allowed it to guide me. I'm upset. Why am I upset? Where does it lead me? And it helps me make better choices. That's why you have emotions, guys. And that leads to point number five is ask how your emotions are serving you. And they are. Anger is serving you. Shame. If you jump on the scale and you look and you're 20 pounds heavier than you'd like to be, and you feel shame or guilt about that or embarrassment about that, that's okay. Like, let's stop saying I shouldn't feel guilty. You know, that's a whole kind of a, 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 a modern concept is, you know, the body positive movement. Of, yeah, just be happy. Just be happy with where you are. Just, just, just be okay with it. Well, you know you're not okay with it. You, no matter how hard you try, you cannot convince yourself that a subpar performance is acceptable. You can try, but you know deep down inside it's not acceptable to show up the way that we are showing up at times. And so that guilt, that sorrow or remorse or that shame can what? It can lead us and it serves us in making better choices. So this is the five-part framework that I use. And I'll tell you what, I'm a lot more fulfilled. I'm a lot happier. I'm a lot more pleasant to be around. And I actually make better choices. Because I'm aware of what's going on. I know it's really cool on podcasts and Instagram and Twitter to see like, don't be emotional. Don't be. No, that's not what it is. Even the guys that you think are, are saying that are not actually saying that. Jocko, for example, he'll talk about detaching from your emotions. What he's actually saying is what I'm saying here is that, hey, we're not going to give them more weight than they deserve. We're just going to step back from a minute. We're going to use it and say, okay, we're angry. Why am I angry? All right, I'm upset. Let me detach from this. Let me make a better choice moving forward. We're saying the same thing here, but everybody interprets it to be this hard A thing that men do, like we're not emotional. Well, you are. Whether you like it or not, whether you think you should be or not, you're emotional, you have emotions, and they're there for a reason. And I don't care if you believe that God created us or you believe in some, some concept of, of evolution or a combination of the both. We have emotions. They're there. We know they're there. We know they're present. So now that we know that, what are we going to do about it? And the answer is you're not going to let them govern your life. You're not going to relinquish control over your life to your emotions. You're not going to let it be the only factor for your decision-making process. You're going to take your emotions into consideration you're going to objectify them. You're going to externalize them like I talked about here. You're going to learn to express these things in healthy ways. You're going to allow them to guide you to make good decisions by asking yourself, how are these things serving me? This is the key to emotional intelligence. You know, you could, you could do hard things and do challenging things and push your body and push your mind. And that's good for mental development. And it's good to expose yourself to a range of emotions that you may not be comfortable with experiencing. But at the end of the day, you've got to process them correctly. Just like your digestive tract processes food correctly and gets into the body parts and the nutrients that it needs and gets rid of the rest, you have to do the same thing with emotions. And when you learn to do that, you're going to be a, you're going to be a better man. You know, think about my kids, my six-year-old in particular. He's not a man. He doesn't have emotional intelligence. 
you know, we, we, we had a party last night and we were all playing and we were playing pranks on each other. And, uh, his older brother ended up getting a plate of whipped cream and tricked him and, you know, whacked it in his face. And he got upset and angry and he thought everybody was laughing at him. We were laughing, but you know, like we were all having fun. My older son, I got him in the face. Like we were all having a good time, but he got really emotional about it. He was very upset about it. And because of that, it ruined his night. We expect that from kids. We don't expect that from adults. We don't expect that from grown men. And yet many grown men get road rage. Many grown men cry online about nothing. Many grown men punch walls and other people for no reason. That's not emotional intelligence. That's not manly behavior. What is, is recognizing what your emotions are telling you, that you're experiencing something, what it's telling you, processing it correctly, and then letting them guide you towards an effective and healthy outcome. All right, guys, let me know if that helps. Let me know how it's serving you. Let me know how you process your emotions, if it's any different, and let's serve each other and help each other out. That's what this movement is all about. Uh, just a quick heads up, we're opening up the Iron Council mid-March. So if you head to orderman.com slash Iron Council, where there's a lot of accountability and camaraderie and brotherhood built in, and we're talking about concepts like emotional intelligence, again, head to orderofman.com slash Iron Council. All right, guys. We'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action, develop and build your emotional resilience and intelligence. Become the man you are meant to be.